take a while. <laughs> This is how you come down. try I'm gonna try using the GoPro again I remember the audio is really good on the boat and on the woods and um, I've been mixing it up with older cameras a new camera DSLR Sony Handycam yesterday's camera um, yeah kind of my screw up I left it on manual focus screwed up the focus and I, I found, I remember with this small GoPro, newer GoPro, you can see the screen. I can see the screen right now. It's recording. I can see the audio. I'm squared up. And um, the audio I found was really good on this little bugger. So you just hit record and let her rip and you don't do anything else. It's very sweet and exactly what I need right now. So let's give that a go. And I think I'm at the recent emails <clears throat> day. So... Let's get into it. Uh, here's a, actually, here's a quick one that came in and replied to my gun control questions. And I think, I'm not sure if this guy was an ex-cop or not. There's, I remember we had a police officer from the UK email us in. But anyways, he said, I just want to say that from where, hey, the, the title is UK Insight into Gun Control. I just want to say that for, uh, from where I'm sat here in the UK, it's pretty fucking clear that every single time I've heard about the horrific attacks on his innocent civilians involving firearms, that it's orchestrated by a group of dark and dangerous people who are clearly trying to force the narrative to enable the removal of all guns. It's as clear as looking through a window. My thoughts are sincerely with the family and those, and of those taken, respect and love to all those good souls. Sincerely, your, sincerely yours, P. Moxon. Thanks, man. <clears throat> Sounds like a nightmare. I hope it's not true, but... It's not good. And I will use this platform to encourage every single good, honest, hardworking person to never, ever give up your firearms, no matter what the flavor of it is. Do not do it. That's very, very vital. Encouragement. Do not give up your firearms, no matter what flavor they are, ever. If anything, buy more, hoard more ammo. That's all I got to say on that topic. Now... Another thing, too, I'll guarantee you guys that some, I will guarantee you that possibly some government people, I don't think, well, they they obviously use police officers, but I can guarantee you whoever's watching this channel who might be in the position of what they call themselves authorities, they are probably just sitting there just waiting for the day I say something a little aggressive, which would be enough to... Um, allow them to think that that's warrant to come over to my home and take my rifles and whatever else I may have because I might be a bit of a loose cannon in the eyes of them and meanwhile I'm just a free human being who's willing to stand up and fight they don't like that so I have to bite my lip on sometimes and one thing some things I really want to say because those people will use those sentences against me in a court of law or whatever it is to prove that I might be some kind of a radical and in trying to uh Encourage violence, which I haven't. I'm encouraging every one of you to stand up and fight for your rights. Never back down. Hoard your guns. Don't give them up. Ever. Okay, back to get, hearing the people. Listen to this one. This is titled Two Experiences. Hello, Steve. My name is Brandon Held. <clears throat> I've watched your videos for over a year now, and I finally decided to share my experiences. 
My first time, I never saw it, but definitely knew it wasn't a bear, a deer, or a guy playing a prank. I was out for a wheeling with my girlfriend, who is now my wife, and two other buddies and the girlfriends. We were in the mountains behind a rich neighborhood called Coughlin Ranch in northwest Reno, Nevada area. It was late at night. We were trying to find a lake called Hunter Lake. We couldn't locate it, so we stopped in a meadow area and started a, f a fire to warm up, have a beer, and smoke a joint. Before we could get our chairs out to hang out, we all heard something inside the tree line. What sounded like heavy walking through the brush and leaves. Being 19 years old at the time, I just got my first 12-gauge shotgun and wasn't scared of anything in the woods, lol. My buddy had a large spotlight, so we scanned the tree line and started calling out, Who's there? Who's out there? Come out or we're gonna shoot. Nothing. Just silence. Then we started hearing what sounded like four inch or bigger branches being snapped. Snap, snap. So the tough guys we were, we yelled out, okay, we're going to shoot. We shined the light where we thought the noise was and I, and I let it have it with a few shots of buckshot in that direction. And then listened, expecting an animal to run off or some guy to come out saying, stop. That didn't happen. The snapping just continued. We all looked at each other in disbelief, and then the overwhelming sense of dread and fear struck all of us at the same time. We all said to each other, let's get the F out of here. We all jumped into our pickups, locked the doors, and left as fast as we could, leaving the fire burning. We were so effing scared. I still am friends with these people, and I can tell the story from time to time at campfires, although they don't voluntarily tell the story as I do. They don't deny it, among others when I tell the story. I'm 40 years old now and it seems like yesterday when I think about it. Second experience, I saw one. I'll write you again telling you that experience. Being a member of the club in no return is not a fun club to be a part of. Thank you for what you do, Steve. It definitely helps knowing I'm not crazy. Whoa, whoa, nobody said you're not crazy. <laughs> Just kidding, man. Second email, titled Two Experiences. Please don't say my name. If you do, no big deal, but I'd prefer you didn't. Thank you, sir. Gotcha, man. I hope you didn't write it. Oh, shit. You already put it in the first one. Mm. Well, I hope I remember to edit it out, man. Now, <clears throat> I've watched your videos for over a year now. Finally decided to share my experiences. First time I never saw it. Oh, okay. It starts again. Where's the second experience? What? Second experience. I saw one. I'll write you again telling an experience. Why did I get two emails from you with the same? Okay, man. Uh, it looks like you sent the same email again. All right. So if you did write down your experience where you've seen one, you didn't send it. So you might want to uh, check out your sent box in your email or whatever you got drafts and uh, try again man all right all right what do we got warning book ahead number two all right let's get into it ain't scared of a book Good morning, Steve. I hope you're doing well and staying safe out there. I couldn't sleep, so I figured I'd write you again and share a few of my encounters I've experienced. As mentioned before, I grew up in the woods all my life. The land is the Lord's and was given to us by Him. And though I share it with any creature who makes a home on it, I will not be run off by one. And so I will continue to have experiences with the Sabbath from time to time. I respect them. I wouldn't want to harm one unless my family was threatened directly. And then the war is on but I have a lot less trust in our demonic government than I do these giants of the woods. Savvy like playing pranks, as I know from experience. I myself was always the most mischievous one in my group of friends and had the most guts for playing pranks and looking for fun. And so the favor is being returned by these hairy creatures to me now. After my first encounter when I was 15, which I enclosed in my first email to you a few days ago, I've always wondered why the creature stalked me the way it did. I've never had a second encounter like that, and I don't want to. Like you say, Steve, if it wanted me dead, it had plenty of chances and could have torn me apart with no effort. I think maybe it had cubs and was running me out of the area. 
and became curious when it couldn't get me to show fear by running. I've pondered on that ever since that day, but now to more recent encounters. As I mentioned before, I've always been in the timber industry, and the sound of a chainsaw has been proven to bring them out. That's the first I've heard that statement myself. I don't mind if they were to walk out in the open, but it's the sneaking around in the, br in the brush just out of sight that gets me concerned, especially after a friend of mine had a dog man encounter, which I will share at a later time. No, oh, dude, you got to get him in one email, man. Anyway, a few years ago, I was, on your, I was on our property in the Mount Hood National Forest in Western Oregon. I intentionally leave out exact locations on purpose because I don't need any weirdos trying to find this area and bringing their corny camera show here to bang on trees or the government showing up uninvited. <laughs> no doubt. I was making a new access road for equipment to get through and had been cutting with my chainsaw for some time when I decided to take a break and fuel up. I pulled my earplugs out, which I normally leave in my ears so I don't hear this kind of stuff. But as I sat there, inspecting my work, suddenly something started crunching through the thick brush from down over the hillside, upwards in my direction, straight at me. At first I thought it was an elk, but the equipment noise should have kept the area clear of most animals. And I could tell it was very heavy and lumbered along on two feet. I started straining my eyes to see what was coming through the thicket as it kept approaching and getting closer with every step. Finally, by the sound, I knew I should be seeing it, because it wasn't more than 50 feet in the brush, but I couldn't make out any dark forms at all. It was November, and all the leaves were gone up the trees and plants, so I had visibility of 200 feet pry, like you meant probably, except in the direction of where this thing was coming in from, about 60 feet tops. Suddenly, it came to a stop, and all went silent, extremely silent, no typical forest noises of any kind. I could feel that I was being watched, but why couldn't I see it? I said, F you, I'm not playing your game, I got shit to do. So I put my earplugs back in, fired up my saw, and went back to work, keep my eyes down low just in case it let itself be seen for a moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. I knew it was watching me, but I wasn't going to give it the satisfaction of freaking me out. I trust the Lord to keep me safe, and that thing knew it. I've never had any more happen that day, but when I returned the next morning, something had taken all the brush I had stacked in piles along the new road and scattered it back in my way again. Upon noticing this, I was peering through the woods around me with my senses on edge when my two dogs came out to visit me, quietly walking up behind me and stepped on some branches, breaking them. I about jumped into the next county. <laughs> no doubt. That would have sucked. That would have been a freaking pucker. Big time. Once I got my heart back in my chest, I went back to work restacking the brush and had nothing more happen. About six months later, though, I was in an area not far from there where I had been cutting all day, trying to get a section out of an old growth fir log for a carving. It was getting dusk out, and I had my old Chevy pickup parked not far from me, about 40 feet away, with my headlamp on. I was having to cut a notch on, in both sides of the log in order to get further in with my blade. <clears throat> As I only had my 24-inch bar, still 361, in the truck. I was preoccupied with what I was doing at the moment, but as I let my saw start a new cut down through the five-foot log, I glanced over at my truck, and there, standing alongside it, between me and the truck, was a massive being, all black or dark brown, and staring at me. I cussed under my breath because I really wasn't looking for a visit. Now my truck is hot blue, so this thing stood out real well against it. My rig is on 35-inch tires and 6-inch lift, with the top of the cab being about 7 feet tall. And this thing's head was easily a foot taller than the truck. I didn't stare at it or want to make eye contact with it, but I noticed it was about four feet wide at the shoulders and its arms hung down to its knees. Very hairy, very solid. I'm no judge of weight, but it was more tall than wide, unlike the one I met in the brush I mentioned in my last email. But I'm assuming it had to have been at least 600 pounds, if not more. 
Usually a big critter like our hogs weighs more than what you guess. <clears throat> Excuse me, but the second I saw this thing standing there, a cold shiver ran down me, but I didn't want it thinking I saw it. So I turned back to focus on my cutting. I didn't want to look back for probably 30 seconds, which was making me nervous because I really didn't want it getting any closer to me. I finally turned my head over to see if it was still there, and it was. Now it was about 10 feet closer to me and standing more to my left near the hood of my truck. Oh my God, that would suck, suck. I could feel my heart pounding and I was getting a cold sweat too, but I went back to focusing on my work. I didn't look back for several minutes knowing that thing could show up next to me or behind me without warning. I find the best thing to do is focus on what I'm doing and not look around and don't get, let your imagination run away with you. It's easy to do out there in the dark with those sad babe being curious and coming around. Excuse me. I looked back up after five minutes and it was gone. Thank God. But I'm sure it was standing in the dark there somewhere. Man, I wasn't about to look around for it. I finished my work there, packed my tools and headed to the house without anything more occurring. The next day I went back, but after that I try to, but after that I try to get back before dusk. One thing I've learned over the years is that it doesn't matter how close to a residence, building, vehicle, or several other people you are, I always thought that they were kind of shy, but not after what I've seen do. I think that, what? I always thought they were kind of shy, but not after what I've seen do I think that. Got it. If they're curious, they will show up even if equipment or machinery is running. I call that area Bigfoot Alley because I have more sightings than that. that. Sorry, because I have more sightings there than not. Once in a while, I'll be clearing trails over there and get caught coming out in the dark. And I don't have a working headlight on my quad. With my experiences, it's easy for me to imagine one of those things running after me in the dark. Like I heard you saying in one of your recent videos. You just got to get your mind on something else because the imagination can be a terrible thing sometimes, lol. One summer, several years ago, I was spending an evening with, the f with a friend, let's call her Jenny, over in Washington at a rock pit. They used to camp out quite often with other friends over a decade ago. She's had her own encounters with this abbey in which one walked up to her and her brother in the forest on Mount Hood while they were armed with AR-15s. They both were frozen in fear while it got within five feet of them and just locked eyes with her. Oof. It was a nine to ten foot male and watched her intently for about a minute before turning its head and disappearing into the trees, literally. They looked and they looked and it was vanished. And this encounter happened in broad daylight. I wish I could see them in this day. Sorry. I wish I could see them in the day and not at night. So anyway, we're enjoying a fire and she decides to try to call one in using the whoops she has heard them make. Oh my God, it's amazing to me that she would want to do that after having one lock eyes with her. I was very skeptical to think that she could do it, but less than a minute afterwards, there was this long, low, long growl coming from the nearby woods. Still, this didn't convince me, so I went back to my fire, making it bigger. We were seated in a kind of a horseshoe area with a 20-foot bank of loose tailings all around behind us and 30-foot tall trees at the top of the bank. The trees were a mix of alder and fir and some pine. After a few minutes, I noticed small rocks come rolling down the bank behind me. I looked up to the top, but nothing was there. I went back to messing with my fire, and a few more golf ball-sized rocks came rolling down. I paid no attention to it, and then a minute or two later, the branches of the alder tree started moving about 15 feet up in the trees from one side of the horseshoe around to the other side, like something very tall is walking through the trees. We both watched as this takes place, and I shout out, hey, come on out of there, <clears throat> but nothing happens. I told you I'm not scared of much, especially a sabe playing pranks. I see nothing in the trees. <clears throat> Excuse me, you guys. So I go back to my fire, hoping to draw this thing out of the woods. Although I did feel a little uneasy with my back to the hillside, but I wasn't going to make it easy for this thing to get its kicks. 
After about 10 minutes, more rolling rocks and another sweep through the tree limbs from left to right. I'm thinking, damn, this, this thing is tall, being able to move limbs that far up the tree. I shout out to it to show itself, but nothing happened. Nothing again. My friend is getting uneasy about now, although being an Iraq War badass veteran, it takes a lot to get her concerned. She's had many savvy encounters as well. Wow. So about then, <clears throat> about a half a dozen larger softball-sized rocks come rolling down. Now, I was getting tired of this nonsense, so I grab a flashlight and go climbing up the bank to see if I could find it. The trees grew real tight together with lots of large outcroppings of rocks scattered around them. And I was thinking how hard something large would have to work to get around up here between all the obstacles. But I also know, knew something could hide well up here from me behind these boulders. I half expected to come around a rock and come face to face with the giant creature, but after several minutes of looking, my friend was getting concerned and started calling me. So I headed back down to the fire, and I wasn't back down there in 30 seconds, and the trees and branches started moving again. Like something really big was walking amongst them. Something else that would happen every time, something else that would happen every time the limb, limbs moved is that there would be the, sorry, is that there would the in, indistinct, sorry, there's some typos. Okay, you guys, a little patience. <clears throat> is that there would be indistinct jingling of a dog collar in the trees. At that moment, I grabbed a baseball-sized rock and I lobbed it into the trees that were moving. And my friend started shouting that I was going to get us killed. But I was determined to get that creature out of the trees. I immediately... After my rock landed in the bushes, another rock came flying out of the trees and we heard it sail overhead and landed in the pit about 400 feet away from us with a crash. I threw one back into the trees, kind of laughed, saying, we better go because this thing wants to have a rock fight. We jumped to my rig and left. Thankfully, nothing came through the back glass as we drove off. Too bad it didn't just come out and sit by the fire with us instead of that nonsense. I've heard of them coming near a fire and sitting down to stare at the occupants around it. I know you and about everyone else listening thinks I'm nuts, but that's okay. Imagine how many people think I'm nuts. <laughs> it is okay. Welcome to the We're Nuts Club. <clears throat> I've always been an adrenaline junkie in my life, from bungee jumping, skydiving, freestyle rock climbing, and whitewater kayaking. The weird thing is, I only want to see the small sabes, <laughs> no doubt. Jenny goes camping in an area where there are really big sabes that come to visit her in the night. These are the big boys, up to 14 feet tall and excess of 2,000 pounds. I want nothing to do with those giants, and though, I'm, though I am invited constantly to go experience them, I will likely never go out there. It's an area known for many strange disappearances, no cell phone reception, and very dark, spooky woods that many large sabe live in. <clears throat> Excuse me. I only go there when I have to, to pull someone out who gets their truck stuck. Speaking of which, <clears throat> Jenny got stuck in the snow one night out there, and I went out and I went to get her out. It was up the side of a mountain where the road is very narrow, and the trees grow tightly right up to the side of a rig, of your rig. As I lay there in the snow trying to hook a strap onto her vehicle, she was standing there and I kept asking me if I heard anything. I was kind of hacked off, having to drive four hours out there in the middle of the night to come find her, so I wasn't paying attention anyway. <clears throat> I kept telling her, no, I don't hear anything. Finally, I stopped and listened. And over the sound of my O2 Dodge Cummings running, I had one of those, got 658,000 kilometers out of it. Five feet away, <coughs> excuse me, you guys, sorry. Five feet away, I hear something very large pacing back and forth in the trees just beyond the edge of the road, out of sight. I had all my off-road halogen lights turned on, and yet I couldn't see anything in the trees. It was bipedal, and it sounded as big as an elephant, stomping back and forth in a line about 20 feet long. I didn't like what I was hearing, and the last thing I wanted was some pissed off creature to come charging out of the trees while I'm laying under the rig in the snow. I immediately went to my truck and gave her my 12 gauge with double odd buckshot in it, 
and pumped one in the chamber. I told her, if anything charge out of those trees, shoot that damn thing right in the face and hopefully blind it. She stood over the top of me while I finished rigging up. The barrel aimed about upward where we figured its head might be. It was much larger than anything I'd ever heard before. I kept glancing every few seconds to the dark trees a few feet away, expecting something to happen without warning. The whole time, that being sounded pissed off, marching back and forth with an aggressive energy that I could feel to my core. <clears throat> I was getting worried and felt very vulnerable down on the ground. Every time the feet hit the ground, I could feel the vibration getting stronger, even though the snow, even through the snow, and giving me the impression it had to be every bit of 1,500 pounds plus. I felt like the longer we were there, the more it was getting aggravated by our presence. I gave her a pull and she came out. Then I threw my strap in the bed and hauled ass down the road, almost going faster than I could see the road laying out in front of me. She had a hard time keeping up with me, but I wanted to get as much distance between us and that bad energy as I could. We both have Native American in us. And I don't know if that helps sense bad vibes from creatures or if it's just being in tune with your sixth sense. I wasn't very committed to brushing my teeth as a kid, so maybe that's why I have a good sixth sense, but bad breath, no fluoride. Oh, fuck. That's a good one. <clears throat> well, I have more to share, but that's all for now, man. If you ever get down in this area of the world, it'd be cool to meet you and share some stories. You got big balls and a lot of patience, man, taking on all those people in your guiding adventures and dealing with mammoth grizzlies. Maybe I should sign you up for a camping adventure with Jenny, and you could swap stories with her. I'd rather take on a savvy I can reason with than an over-caffeine person with a loaded rifle. I enjoy hearing your personal stories, especially the one about the naked cross-country ski girls. I want to hear that one again sometime, and hopefully the sound doesn't cut out in the video. Thanks again, Steve. You take care, man. CJ. P.S. I love the music you always have in your videos and all the effort you put into making them. God bless you. Okay, man. Appreciate you. I absolutely appreciate the time that you just donated out of your life. To share that. You'd say I got big balls. You kidding me, dude? You're looking at a Sasquatch between you and your truck and you keep working. Actually, you know what? I think about it. I think I do the same thing. Um, I guess you wouldn't have much of a choice, though, would you? It's in between you and your truck. Like, I remember, was it last time, last year, this time of year, I think it was, and when shit started getting thrown at me from the right of me, pinging off the back of the quad. And I've heard noises behind me, stuff thrown at me a few times, and it's just kind of like, <laughs> you just stay concentrated on what you're doing, and in the back of your head, you're going, F you. Piss off and leave me alone. I don't give a shit about your ass. Anyway, I'm assuming, if you are watching this, then I'm assuming Jenny is, and I'll give a personal blast out to Jenny, that, Jenny, if you if you feel compelled one day, and uh, it sounds like you get a lot of experience with these things, Maybe, possibly, if you, if you uh, would be so kind and generous, would be to possibly send us, um, send us some information, some knowledge that you have. All right, I'd be really, really interested to learn what you've learned. And uh, yeah, I would be very, very interested. So, if Jenny isn't watching, man, maybe you can send this to her. And who knows, maybe I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do this year. We were <clears throat> going to try to take off for a month overseas, maybe possibly. It's been a couple years being locked down by the filthy pricks, criminals who were uh, are in the position of, I hate saying it, I hate admitting it that they're in control because I cannot stand being controlled in any way. But anyway, I'm almost contemplating myself going on a solo possible U.S. tour. Maybe. We'll see. And I just might go down south like I used to do for many years and uh, hook up with a lot of you. Possibly. Maybe even end up at Dave Palacios <clears throat> and uh, get a lot of people talking. Do I want to go in the woods of Jenny where these things are hanging out and she sees them all the time? I'm not really craving that. <laughs> right? I mean, they're all around me all the time wherever I go. And I'm not summons summonsing them in any way. Um, I'm always saying, just freaking leave me alone, man. Just leave me alone. But I don't know. Who knows? There's, I've got a handful of people. The Arizona 402, I wouldn't, I'd love to hook up with you guys um, and other people. 
people who speak with Mr. Ash, everybody. And um, would I go in the woods with many of you? Of course I would. Of course I would go. Um, would I be accompanying you into the woods because personally it's going to up my chances of seeing one of these beings? No, <laughs> not at all. If I do make it down and I do accompany people out to where they have numerous experiences, I think I'm, I would only do it just to watch you and speak with you and watch your demeanor and watch how you carry yourself and watch and see the new country and just it'd be like being a fly on the wall watching you with your experiences without any craving at all in the back of my mind of hoping to God I'm going to see one or even get a photo. I'm good. I can do that here. But I opt out. Anyway, Jenny, yeah, valid. <clears throat> Send me more, you guys. All right. Send me more. Us more. Send us more. You know what I think, too, to, uh, when you speak about being veterans, excuse me, I have a feeling that Afghanistan, there's a lot more to it when it comes to Afghanistan. I think there's a lot more to the conflict, the past conflicts. Um, I do not believe that any Afghan was in any way, shape, or form responsible for terrorist attacks on North American soil. There's no way you could convince me, ever. But I wonder what the purpose is of all the conflict going on over there. There's a lot of weird shit that goes on in that country. There's a lot of our veterans who have directly eyewitnessed crazy-ass shit going on in that country with beings that are described some of the descriptions of some of the beings these people claim to have seen have been in gunfights with that i've had emailed to me is off the freaking charts uh, we have veterans who have seen afghan old old afghan man basically walk off the ground and walk right up a wall right in front of them there's been beings with uh goats feet human bodies reported being shot at. There's the red-headed giant being shot. There's all sorts of crazy, crazy shit going on in Afghanistan, man. And I'll tell you what, uh, one thing that I, I've tried it a couple times. One time I decided I was gonna go uh, around the world by myself with no plan, no map, because I like to scare the shit out of myself and see new stuff and I don't like being, I don't like being scared out of doing things and I wanted to force myself to do that. And then a friend of mine who's in law enforcement, <clears throat> um, no, actual, he's actually in uh, Coast Guard and law enforcement fisheries. And he cautioned me, he says, no Muslim countries. And I'm like, what? And he's traveled the world like extensively. He says, and I was rattling off one country I was going to start at. And he said, don't be stupid. That's where you get your head chopped off. And then we started cluing me in. And then I realized, oh, that sucks, man. There's a lot of countries today where you just cannot go. Especially a man alone. <clears throat> you might be seen as some kind of a threat. And then next thing you know, you've lost your melon. That would really suck. And unfortunately, like a place like Afghanistan, that's those mountains and all the terrain. I'd love to go see that shit. I would love to go with a mountain guide, a fellow hunter, whatever, and go uh, and go off in those mountains. I'd love that. But unfortunately, with all the Taliban and all the hate that the West has created, um, it wouldn't be safe for me to go to the, to see all that. I'd probably lose my head, right? Shitty. Uh, what else? The Himalayas. I would love to go see the Himalayas and go off into the mountains with some experienced mountain people there too. Same deal. I would love that. Why am I babbling? I'm babbling. But anyway, Afghanistan. Um, a lot of you veterans have seen the crazy shit there. And you think it may sound absolutely too crazy to share here. Trust me, it's not too crazy to share here. Please, if you ever bored out of your tree, send it to me, all right? There's a lot of us who are very, very curious, especially me. Hmm. That's almost two copies, go figure. The babbling, the babbling gets lengthy. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, here we go. This is titled, Maybe the Ultimate Puzzle Piece. You got our attention now. Hello, Steve. I'm addressed as Lewis Edward. 
Love and light to all those seeking truth. I humbly thank you for your time and dedication being helping all people. Bless you for all you give so freely. May the love and light of our source be with you always, always. I share your love for nature and feel most at home when I'm in the forest and wilderness areas. I relate my encounters briefly as they can be explained rationally and are not the important information herein. Both experiences were on the Dick Earl Arm of Navajo Lake, northern New Mexico, happening on separate trips. First happened late afternoon, sunny, partly cloudy, and we observed two basketball-sized orbs. They were mostly white with a yellowish haze towards the center. Both moved vertically downward about 20 feet apart and disappeared after a short time. I wrote it off as ball lightning. Second, Happened 10 p.m. or later <clears throat> when I heard what sounded like large rocks splashing just off the aft deck. I fear I felt at the time I thought the f sorry the fear I felt at the time I thought was my concern for damage to my boat. This occurrence I wrote off to beavers that have lived in this arm for years, slapping the water with the tails for my presence near their home. <clears throat> Excuse me. The intention is to share the knowledge I've discovered after 71, near, 71 years in this physical experience. All right, 71-year-old gentleman, I am stoked to hear of what you've gathered up. As you say, take from this what you will or leave it. I will give references and sources to, for all the research, for all to your research at the end of this email. For those who have doubts, concerns, or just want to go deeper down the rabbit hole, Please understand, I believe we truly have free will, and everyone is on their own path. What I share here is spiritual and has nothing to do with man's many religions. I'll get to the puzzle piece after a little groundwork. Please accept the following as truth slash fact, even if you have reservations. All right, man, let's go. Number one, love is all there is. <clears throat> Number two, we are eternal consciousness. Number three, we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. Number four, fear is the lack of love. Number five, everything is vibration slash frequency. Number six, we are all creators by intent or default. Number seven, our emotions are the indicators of our connection to source, bracket, God, and bracket. Your feelings of love and happiness are high vibrations connecting you with source and fear and hate are the lowest vibration disconnecting you from who you really are. Number eight, we create by thought, word, and deed by vibrating the fabric of space creation. Number nine, as you think you vibrate, as you vibrate, you attract, as you attract, you receive. Try to have the highest thoughts of love and happiness. Give thanks and gratitude and, appre and appreciation often. Laugh at life. Number 10, there is only now. The now we are experiencing is that which we created in the past, manifested. Number 11, what you push against, do not want, you attract into your life and add power to. Number 12, source does not interfere with our free will, and any judgment of our free will is self-inflicted. Number 13, what we call birth is moving our eternal consciousness slash being from our spiritual home to the physical, and what we refer to as death is our eternal consciousness returning home. Number 14, we all have a higher energy self that is always anchored to source. We are all one and at the same time, unique individuals. Now, it's time to share the most important puzzle piece in my belief. This is so easy, will cost nothing but a little well-spent time and should turn out to be earth-shaking. The most important thing, thing we can do is connect with our source, the creator of all God, my least favorite reference for source, but most familiar to most people. Please, to all the atheists that might be here, don't shut down quite yet as you may discover a life-changing experience. The ideal method to connect with source is meditation, although there may be other ways. I am humbly asking all who hear this, spend as little as 15 minutes a day 
quieting your thoughts, quieting your thoughts, the best time I have found is as soon as possible after waking from sleep, as the rush of life is minimal at this time. The actual time of meditation is not as important as the actual meditation. If you find it difficult to stop thoughts, try focusing on your breathing, water dripping from a faucet or a quiet fan running. If quieting the mind is not working, focus on happy, loving thoughts during the time you meditate and keep trying. Once you have quieted your thoughts, now focus on happy, high vibration thoughts. Think of the world in a loving way that you desire it to be. One of us connect, one of us connect to source in this way is more powerful than thousands who are not connected. I have found that meditating has had many positive effects on my life. I hope it is clear that the idea is for each one of us to create the world anew in thought, word, and deed. Please, all help with the manifestation. I suggest this is a way of having a positive effect on the world without the negative effects of violence. Or, I am open to other possibilities and will gladly entertain other thoughts. I hope all who listen till now will join me in a new now. As I try to end this long narrative, I would like to shed light on subjects that arise often on this channel. Fear cripples so many people. I cannot emphasize how important it is for all to understand we are eternal beings, having a physical experience. Do not fear death or any of the psychopath, psychopathic narcissists that are impacting our lives at this time. Do not push against those things you do not want in your experience. Bless everything in your life and think no more of that which is not wanted. Changing your thoughts to a higher vibration. We should all try to understand there are many unknown things, unknown things surrounding us. Live in a state of love, high vibration. Fear no, nothing. No, oh, sorry. Fear no thing. Nothing. I am sure savvy are most everywhere. Never seen one, although I would put that on my bucket list, along with cougars, wolves, whales, and a long list of others. Most of us will only see on film. For me, the gut instinct you refer to often is our ever-present higher self protecting us from something. We have so many abilities we have forgotten and are hidden from us by those who should be teaching us. Oh, amen to that one. That is 100% absolute truth. The abilities attributed to Sabe we have also, but are forgotten. My understanding of Sabe is that they are people who made the choice to live rural slash nomadic lives when others chose civilization in the distant past. Love without end. Glenda Green. Sabe probably made the correct choice as civilization seems uncivilized in many ways. Sabe being people, they should experience, they should experience emotions as we do. If you were to hurt my family, what response would you expect? For those leaving negative comments, bless them. They are not who they are, nor their truth path. Try hard to judge not. Go within, for that is where we will connect with our higher self and our true source. I know you are in control of how you feel and respond to, to what you experience in life. We are not these bodies we use in the physical. Think of it as our avatar. Our eternal consciousness is, is the experiencer, the observer. If by some chance, I've not lost everyone hearing this, I'll close with my supernatural experience in northern New Mexico. <laughs> go figure. Nor New Mexico again. I'm going to have to go down there. Ten or more years ago, a friend who was a channeler from birth was instructed by his guys to build a medicine wheel in a very high energy in a very high energy location used by Native Americans for hundreds of years. A group of friends met him at the appointed time and place and the medicine wheel was constructed to the guide's plan. Years later while visiting for the purpose of meditate of meditation, I gave a prayer and thanks before entering. As I opened my eyes, I was surprised to see all the pinion pines on this mountain glow with a brilliant emerald green light flowing to brilliant white for the last eight inches of each branch. The guides, when questioned, told us it was the energy of the medicine wheel. Thank you again 
Hoping this does not turn out to be your longest email. Love and light to you and all your fellow experiencers. Lewis Edward references Life and Teachings of the Masters of the Far East. Abraham Hicks, Law of Attraction, Near Death Experience, YouTube, Conversations with God, Alan Watts, Peter Panagore, Edgar Casey, Autobiography of a Yogi, Yogananda. The sources are abundant. If you truly seek, they will find you. Okay, man. Absolutely appreciate that one. There's a lot of weight to this email. I'll tell you what. And unfortunately, as you know, speaking of you directly, you know there's going to be a shit pile of people shaking their heads. Probably shut off the, clicked off the video by now halfway through or whatever. Because they can't wrap their heads around it. They don't want to. There's no time. They're just not in that mind frame. It does interest me though. But one of the things, you know, Conversation with God, I was aware of that book years ago. And, um... You know, like I said before, my mind doesn't match up with my mouth a lot, but you know, the one, the, what's suggested is we, when we are in our conscious, our energy form that we agree to what the next journey is going to be here in the physical form. And sometimes I'm troubled with that. When you look at what's going on the planet, like if you guys Google up the South Sudan currently, as an example, South Sudan, uh, some guys made a quick video there. <laughs> bravest some very very brave very, very brave people and they went to south sudan to try to make a video of what's going on down there if you can find that video you should watch it and when i see shit like that going on it makes me think okay that doesn't make sense to have all those souls being in their energy forum and agree to each other hey man Next time I go down there, let's go down there and uh, let's go. Let's go be born in South Sudan, nineteen in, in 2022, and go through what they're going through. As an easy example of, huh? Why? <laughs> what? Because that is a absolute living freaking hell. And I don't understand it. If we had that kind of control in our conscious self, in our energy self, whatever it's called, why would we not? choose to come down here and create all the good that you, you just mentioned in the email why where does where does the confusion start where does the where's the road fork am i making any sense i hope so but where is the road fork right like who in their who would be in their absolute state of love and energy <clears throat> and then all of a sudden decide hey <clears throat> I think I'm going to go down to Canada. I see an opening to be a ruthless dictator, and I'm going to do everything I can to make life absolutely hell for the people in that country. Huh? Really? <laughs> there's, a bunch of cute con there's a bunch of shit going on that confuses the shit out of me, right? i got to do a lot more reading, but I'm, it's time, man. It's time, time, time. I'm getting closer to having a lot of time where I can pick up all those these books and more I mentioned, and I can have time to read and look and learn and get better myself, which I want to personally and, and i'm known speaking for a lot of people here there's just so much shit to do <laughs> so much shit to do cutting out that time to enhance you is not easy for many people right but anyway as long as we keep talking sharing and encouraging like you just encourage many people with nothing but good the message in your email was nothing but positive and good there you go everybody give it a go today give it a go tomorrow give it a go whenever always Try to send out messages of positive and good encouragement. And I'll admit, it is tough when you come up against somebody who's dark and you just want to kick the shit out of them and, and erase them from, from, the, sh from the, the shit they are peddling and passing on. But anyway, I got to go. I babble too much. I've only had two coffees and a breakfast. I got shit to do. That coffee's freezing frickin' cold, which reminds me, I gotta get that wood stove moved down to there. I gotta go buy a pipe, put it through the ceiling, out the roof. <sighs> Another task. <laughs> so I can warm it up in here and get this place insulated properly and soundproof and get that room done. I get an electrician here, get that thing done. Now my pump in my well is failing and there's no pressure for water in the house. The kitchen sink faucet exploded yesterday and I had to crawl underneath there and replace it. It's endless, right? It's endless. But as long as we all take out the time to create some kind of good and encourage people, well, we move forward in a positive direction, right? We'll be back shortly.
two feet to the left, I'm gonna die. 